Joining us now, Ginkgo Bioworks CEO Jason Kelly. Jason, it's great to have you on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Morgan. All right, so walk me through this partnership that you struck with Google, because it looks like you're going to pay Google um, an escalating minimum amount over the course of five years, and then Google, based on undisclosed business milestones, uh, has the possibility of f putting money back into Ginkgo as well. So, so what is this going to enable? Yeah, so, so the number one thing it enables is it gets us access to the infrastructure at Google. Right. And, and the reason this is exciting is, you know, folks have gotten to learn more and more about how these AI models work. Right. And to give you an example, something like ChatGPT, basically this big computer brain. It was fed a bunch of English language books and other text, and it learned to speak English. And the idea behind our, our project with Google is to take that same kind of computer brain, instead of giving it books written in English, give it books written in DNA. So the genomes of all the organisms that are out there in nature. And the idea is it'll learn to speak DNA, just like ChatGPT learned to speak English. And DNA is behind half of your therapeutic drugs, many of your foods, new materials, and things like that. And the hope is this model could ultimately do that job better than you know, a scientist trying to, to write that DNA by hand. Uh, and that, that's the project with Google. And by doing this scale of deal, where we are committing to $250 million of, of spend over the next five years, we build that asset for our customers here at Ginkgo, and they can access it as a service. Yeah, and I know you sit on, on quite a bit of data. It sounds very promising. We've had a number of investors who've come on and said um, biotech, for example, is one of those key uh, near-term areas where you're going to see generative AI realize. So how quickly does this become a money-making endeavor for you? Yeah, so you know these models take a little bit of time to train, but not that long. Even these big foundation models uh, being trained on huge amounts of English language data are trained over three or, or six month periods, right? So we do expect to be able to have models get out there. Um, you know, Ginkgo uniquely has a, a platform business model where we can go out and get service fees and ultimately get royalties from our customers. So we have the go to market channels for this already, which we think is pretty unique in biotech. So, so then is this a new revenue stream or does this build on the revenue streams you have already? It should expand the ones we have already. Now, we are looking, and, and this is something we're really excited about, um, you know, Google has uh, the ability to launch models in their, in their sort of marketplace. And I think th if that is successful, and we will be trying that out as part of this partnership, that would be a new type of revenue stream for Ginkgo. And, and that's just a new area right now, even on top of uh, these sort of generative English language models, people are still trying to figure out what are the right business models. We're going to run that same experiment in the biotech industry uh, through our partnership with Google. Okay, so as you make these investments, as you build out these models, how do you balance that against uh, your current book of business? You've got the synthetic biology, but you had the biosecurity business, which grew strongly during the pandemic, but, but is now lapping some of those figures and has fallen off as we've seen demand for some of your products around that, around that wane. You're not making money yet, but I know you're sitting on a cash pile. So, so how does all of this play out? Yeah, so we ended last quarter with 1.1 billion in the bank. So that, that's, a, that's a good uh, margin of safety for us to build all this stuff out over time. Um, so biosecurity, just to bring it up, you know, we have a program with the CDC where we look at wastewater from planes, and then we read the DNA of what's in there to look for emerging pathogens. And we're expanding that internationally now as well. We have, we have large programs in Qatar, a number of other, other countries as well. And so we see that as really a persistent, th think of it like radar stations, monitoring the weather and also looking you know, for defense applications like, like military and so on. We should have similar uh, bio radar stations. And absolutely, being able to interpret that DNA sequence data, one of the things that would run through is AI models like the ones we're talking about here with Google. So we do think it's a nice fit for the biosecurity business as well.